Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode. I am so excited and honoured. I have the incredible Jess Rydell here with me. Welcome, Jess. Thank you, Louisa. I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much. I cannot wait to dive into this conversation. We're going to be talking about successfully moving through fear. And just as a, a little way of introduction, Jess Rydell is a certified Wayfinder coach who received her training from the Martha Beck Institute. She graduated from Roanoke College, if I pronounced that correctly. You're close, it's Roanoke, Roanoke. Roanoke. Okay, it was <laughs> yeah. close, close, uh, with a BA in theatre and earned her MFA in acting from Louisiana State University. She currently supports entrepreneurs enhancing their sales results through personalization of the sales process and detailed skill practice sessions. Oh, that's just absolutely fantastic. Jess possesses a deep understanding and empathy for the fears, resistance and pain points of entrepreneurs when it comes to sales. I just think this is going to be like our most listened to episode on the podcast because it's such a huge, huge topic for entrepreneurs. And Jess is a master at helping her clients recognize their own blind spots and the limiting beliefs and fears that may be holding them back from achieving their highest potential. With her strong intuition and clear audience, oh, I love it, Jess speaking my language, she has supported many clients in learning to follow their own inner guidance and moving through their fears to achieve greater levels of success and results in sales and business. Well, a huge, huge welcome, Jess. Thank you. So excited to dive into this conversation. Before we start, I have started asking everybody when they're on our podcast this question, so I'd love to hear your take on this. What does prosperity mean to you? Yeah. And you know what? I, I didn't, I didn't get some canned answer prepared because I kind of felt into that and I was like, oh, it's here. It'll come. Um, prosperity, prosperity, prosperity is, it is navigating life with a sense of wonder and abundance and gratitude. I think just appreciating, um, all that we have, you know, definitely leads to more. And I think prosperity is is less about a figure in your bank account and way more about a a way of being and the way the way in which you walk through the world with an openness to magic and miracles and possibility. And um, I think that sums up prosperity from my perspective through my lens in a nutshell. Oh, I love it. And I love what you said about the way you walk through the world as well. The, the frequency that you're carrying into doing that, that's just absolutely yeah, phenomenal because that is how we attract to us um, what is in resonance with us. So how did this all how did this all start? How did you start your start your business? Because there's always a story I've I found for everybody along their along their journey. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, a couple things um that, that make this kind of a great story, actually, Louisa. Um it's and then this ties into what we're going to be talking about in in a few minutes, which is fear. Uh, so so I was in corporate America for about twenty some years and working primarily in in sales roles in corporate. I worked for a weight management company, and every year, my aunt, who was a clinical psychologist, she would gently suggest to me because. I hated corporate America. I was like square peg, round hole. I mean, it was a nightmare. I just, I'd get, I'd get reprimanded for making funny faces in meetings. And they're like, you need to have a poker face. And I'm like, that's impossible. I'm an actor. (laughs) It just wasn't really a fit. So every year, every year, my aunt would gently suggest, she's like, why don't you think about doing your own thing? You know, Um, why don't you maybe think about, you could be a consultant or a coach and have your own business. And I would just, shrink in terror. (laughs) I would trace it all the way to being a bag lady, pushing a shopping cart under the overpass. Yes, it would go straight there. Yeah, yeah, it would go straight there. That's where, yeah. And so of course I'd never take action on any dreams or goals because if that's the end result, why even get started? (laughs) Why bother, right? So it it came to be that, you know, this this went on for probably about six or seven years, like all through my 30s, into my 40s, well, through the end of my 30s, into my 40s. And the real turning point happened um, on my 45th birthday. I was at dinner with my husband. And uh, this was in 2016. So it was a while ago. It was seven years ago. And he looked at me across the dinner table and he said, Jess, how does it feel to be halfway to 90? What's a question? 
<laughs> you know, it, and, and it was, it, 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 it made me, <clears throat> it, it kind of made me mad. I was, I was irritated. I was annoyed. I was like, how dare you ruin my birthday by reminding me of, <laughs> of my age and halfway to 90 just sounded so old and, and, and like hang it up or life is over. Or what have you? However, what he didn't realize was that little facetious question set into motion. First, kind of a, a ruthless inventory of where I was in my life and the fact that I wasn't really living up to, you know, I know this is kind of hackneyed and people say this, but I wasn't really living up to my potential and I wasn't doing something that truly fulfilled me on a soul level. Mm. So it was time to make some changes. And within that calendar year, I had completely reorganized my life. Um, I got into the Martha Beck coaching program. I opened a business a year later with like actually a studio space because a lot of my my earlier work, I did it in person, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a lot of power in, in the human connection and having someone sitting in front of you, you know, and it, it, it's, yeah. it's good, it's good on, on Zoom too, but I just found the energy of, of being connected in, a, in an office was really incredible too. So, so I, I turned it around and I, I guess I, I really had to move through those bad lady fears. <laughs> <laughs> Realize that really the blocker of the dream had been fear itself. Mm. And it really can just stop people, stop people in, in, in their tracks. Yes. see this all the time isn't it whenever on someone's procrastinating on something you can bet your bottom your dollar that there is fear yep. uh lurking away there yeah. how how do you see that fear has prevented you from moving forward in your in your business well I learned a lot about fear um in my coaching program and I realized that it's like it's almost like that we, we have a, a subconscious attachment to it and that creates a paralysis. So, and I think a lot of people don't even want to admit that they have fear because it it it's a show of, of of weakness of some sort. I mean, I think we as coaches we've embraced our fear, or we wouldn't have gotten got buckets of it. <laughs> yeah, oh, tons, right? But we're, but we're we're open about it. We're like, I'm scared. Like, mm -hmm. so we start to celebrate it, and I think that's a turning point for many because you know, in my corporate life we weren't allowed to talk about fear. We weren't allowed to talk about failure. Failure was not an option. Mm. I had a, a boss that used to like bellow that on conference calls, you know? So we were running from fear. So the second you kind of allow yourself to say, hmm, let me look at the fear. Let me let me bring it to the surface and examine it so that I can, I can blow it up or at least move through it, right? It's never going to fully go away. And I think a lot of people, you know, they look at other folks with confidence and like, I want to be like this person. This person must just be fearless. And it's not true. Everybody is filled with fear. But if we allow it to control us on a subconscious level by not truly acknowledging and examining it, it runs the show. Hmm. So I think learning to dance with your fear is an essence for any entrepreneur, anyone that wants to start a business. It's one of the first steps to say, what am I afraid of? So oh, good. I love how you said dance with fear. I can feel like it can be a bit like doing the hokey pokey when you're deciding to <laughs> do business. You put one foot in and then you're like, oh, retracted. Yeah. I, I like that analogy. Yeah. I, I, but then it has to be more of a tango if you're yes. going to use it to move forward, right? <laughs> uh, absolutely. So, what do you see from, you know, from your perspective where what happens when we don't acknowledge that we've got fear and actually deal with the fear what do you see happening I see a lot of paralysis mm. I see a lot of what you mentioned earlier procrastination avoidance um stuckness you know it just basically it it it's a it, it is a paralyzer and mm. Yeah, yeah, it can really stand in the way of you achieving your dreams and goals if you just try to, you know, tuck it in the closet and slam the door. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, I, I used to make this analogy, you know, you're having guests over and, and you don't want them to see your big mess. So you tuck it all in the closet, you know, all the boxes and bits and, and you slam the door and you're like, okay, at least it looks good from the outside. And I think a lot of people do that with fear is they, they shove it under, they don't acknowledge it. And they kind of come forward with, with a, I think it's like a version of confidence that's not real. It's more like bravado, if that makes sense. 
does. Yeah. The front. It's not, it's not true confidence because truly confident people have examined and acknowledged their fears and they learn to move with them and through them and with some really different reframes where they start telling themselves a different story. Because if we're avoiding the fear and we're letting it be the thing that freezes us in our tracks where we're not expanding and we're not moving forward, you, you can't expand in a contracted state. So no. the fear causes that contraction. And in order to expand, we got to release it and look at it and, and kind of move into it and then move through it. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It, it absolutely does, because it's something that I, I will often talk to my clients about how if you if you don't do as you described you know examine the fear allow yourself to kind of recognize it and to reframe it and I talk about you know changing your identity so that you're not feeling the fear anymore because you have you know changed your identity so you become the person that has already had the success or done the thing that you've you know you're, you're working working on or wanting to create um, if we don't do that work and there's lots of different ways that you know different coaches work in that way to help you get to, to that space the subconscious is just gonna keep bringing up the thing to take you out of the game and if fear is working right we'll give you some more fear <laughs> and it, the subconscious has a hundred percent success rate at kind of just keeping us back in alignment with the programs that we've got running and let unless we do something to to change them right exactly yeah and I think the first step is is just acknowledgement and awareness of, of the fear. And it's like, you can get through a set of fears, but guess what? Next expansion, next level, new level, new devil, a whole new set of fears is going to crop up. So you have to have similar tools to navigate through, you know, and 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 learn new ones too, as life goes on. I'm sure there's many I don't even know about. So I'm, I'm really open to, I, this is just such a, such an interesting area of study for me. And I've helped so many clients that have come and said, you know, just ever, all the work we did, the tools that we that we used helped me to dissipate my fear, not not eliminate it altogether, but uh, not allowing it to continue to run the show. I love that that word dissipate. You can just feel like it's melted away, and <laughs> the body can just oh. relax, yeah, and just feels soothed and safe to safe to move forward. Yeah. I'd love to get your take on, you know, just thinking about the different concepts of fear and, and how we perceive fear. Is, is fear real? Ooh, this is a juicy, juicy question. Ooh. <laughs> okay. And, and, you know, this, this actually, this used to frustrate me because when I first learned, when I had a coach that, that told me that fear wasn't real and I had a hard time accepting that I had a hard time swallowing it. But the way she explained it made a lot of sense. And I've integrated this into my own beingness. It's like, Fear really isn't real. Fear is something we conjure up in the mind, right? It's like <laughs> we create it. So it, 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 it feels real because our mind convinces us that it is a reality. Danger is real. Fear is not. And I, I like to use this example. So imagine you're out in, in the woods and a bear is chasing you. That's real danger. You're in danger. The bear is actually chasing you. Well, imagine you're you're in the cabin and you're worried. You're 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 scared to go outside because there's bears in the woods and one might chase you. Mm -hmm. Now that's fear. That's not danger. You're not in literal danger when you're in the cabin worried about all the bears out there, right? Those bears might be down like eating blackberries at a bush somewhere else, not worried about you or what you're doing or where you are. But if you're actually out in the woods getting chased by the bear, now that's that's danger. That's real, right? And so your adrenaline's going to kick in. But we can go to those places in our mind by just thinking about, oh my gosh, there's bears in this in these woods and they might chase me. And next thing, it's, it, we create that reality. Mm. But it is real. It's conjured in the mind. That's so good. I think everyone can really relate to that. And when you kind of translate that to growing your business or starting your business, like you were saying, you know, the fear of I'm going to be a bag lady if I start my business, you know, <laughs> everyone can probably relate to some version of uh, where they've conjured up that fear, starting their business, hiring a new team member, sales for a program, perhaps that they haven't sold before. There's yeah, so many ways we can tell ourselves these stories. 
Right. And it and it it's a it's a block, you know, it creates a block and not a bridge. And we need the bridge to overcome the fear. And and if we just stick with the block, we don't get anywhere. And and it's it's on us, it's on our heads if we allow fear to control our expansion and our actions. Yeah, so true, so true. I love what you said there around we need the bridge to be able to 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 move forward. What are some of the the tools that you use with your clients that to help them, you know, move through their fear? Yeah, there's a couple that I really am very fond of. And um, I spoke at an event in September and I actually did this in a group setting and I'm getting ready to uh, speak to another group at the middle of, of November virtually. I have a group of about 350 people and I'm going to take them through this exercise as well. And it's, it's an exercise called the fear detox. Ooh, and like I said sentence. earlier about bringing those fears to the surface is taking a look at them, okay, and examining them. And then creating an alternate sentence that's a reframe. So it's something that that boosts us up, that makes us excited, that builds our confidence. And even if it doesn't feel 100% real and valid, the more we focus on the reframe and not the fear, the more expansive we become. So that's a really, really great tool that I absolutely love. The other uh, tool, which is which is which is it's a really interesting exercise that you can do where you're able to identify your fears as just that a fear or a thought. Right. Like by questioning, you know, instead of being attached to it and it and it's subconsciously controlling you, it's kind of in your nervous system, it's in your energy field that's keeping you from doing all the things. If we can say, hmm. I'm having the thought that if I do this. I might fail like it's just a thought. So just thinking, going around thinking, I'm, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail. You see how that's like, that's mm, my it's body controlling you. Yeah, yes, it's controlling me. But if I'm like, hmm, I'm having the thought and then just noticing, we could play a little bit. Do you have a fear that you could like, that this would be good for our listeners, I think, because they'll understand this a little bit better. Is there a fear? Okay, yes. So I have a fear that okay. so we've just made the decision. Um, so I've been thinking for a while that I'm going to relocate. And I've been playing with going to Dubai, but I wasn't really feeling Dubai. And then this week, um, me and my son, my youngest sons, I have two sons, me and my son have decided we're going to go traveling and going to go around the world to choose somewhere to relocate to. My okay. eldest son is going to stay here. And of course, there's a whole bunch of fears that are starting to kind of bubble up around. What if I don't like it? You know, all those kinds of things. Oh, so the travel itself that. you're afraid you're not going to like or the, the, the relocation? The the, the travel, the oh. the moving around piece, because okay. I'm used to being here in, in one place. I do like okay. traveling, though. So, you know, you get those the duality of the stories going on in your head. Yeah, let, then let, let's use that one. OK, so I just want you to say out loud for me. I want you to say out loud. I'm afraid I won't like the travel. I'm afraid I won't like the travel. How does that feel in your body? Not true. <laughs> Doesn't feel that true right now? No, right? no. So you're like, wait, that kind of sounds kind of silly, right? That does okay, sound good, silly. Good. So you already, you're already kind of detached from it, which is a great mm. step. So, so kudos to you and congratulations. Now, now we're just going to make it a thought. I'm having the thought that I'm not going to like the travel. I'm having the thought. Just say I'm having the thought that I'm not going to like all this travel. Okay, so I'm having the thought that I'm not going to like all this travel. Is anything different now, a little bit different than it even was when you first said? I felt I, I like that's travel. just a lie because I love traveling. Ooh, okay, so okay, so so we see how the fear is sort of unfounded. We're yeah. going to take one step further. And this is just such a simple thing you can do with any thought, any fear that is getting in your way. Now, I Lisa, love this, Jess. It, isn't this fun? I just want you to <laughs> notice it. And, and and I will say this for, for our listeners. If you're just listening, you might be feeling like a skeptic right now because I was. I'm like, well, these people are acting like their fear is dissipating from this silly little <laughs> activity. And I was really a skeptic until I actually did it myself and said it out loud. So you're feeling into it now. And what I'd like to encourage our listeners to do is actually do the exercise where you're saying this out loud and doing the steps. Yes, so now we're join in. <laughs> and then again. I was going to say they can join in as they, they are. Join in. Right, right, right. Because now we're just going to notice the thought. So you're going to say, last step is I'm noticing. 
I'm just noticing. I'm noticing a, that that um that I'm having the thought that I won't like all this travel. Okay, so I'm noticing that I'm having this thought that I won't like all this travel. One more time. I'm no, I'm noticing that I'm having this thought that I won't like all this travel. It feels completely disconnected from me. Yay! Okay, that's the goal. <laughs> Right, that's the goal. We want you to disconnect from it. But, but you see, you are already a little detached even when we started. And most mm. people aren't. Most people are still really attached to that thought and it's really real and they're feeling it in their body. But then when they can put it over here and call it a thought, and then they can put it over here and just notice that they're having the thought, it's a game change. And it's so simple. But you can do that with any thought or fear to really get some perspective on it. I love that because you can literally just feel it kind of come out out of your wherever you're holding that thought and put it in front of you. Yes, correct. Correct. You did a great job with that, Louisa. Thank you for playing with me. That was, <laughs> that was fun. fun. I didn't to do that, but it was perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, that was really good fun. I love that. So these are really powerful tools that you can help people have some like instant shifts. Um, yeah. Because, of course, we have so many thoughts over during the day fear is going to be bubbling up and playing a huge part in so many things so thank you so much for sharing those because I think they will really help people very instantly be able to kind of change their energetic state and to be able to move out of move out of that fear um and just to kind of wrap up you know I'm sure you might have touched on some of these um, already is um but just to kind of highlight them if if they overlap is what would be the sort of top three tips for entrepreneurs to take away from our our conversation today Mm. um I think I think really what I said earlier about learning to dance with the fear and going in your in your day there there's um I actually have a good friend who's in Canada I've never met her in person but we've sort of become accountability buddies and she's absolutely lovely and um she was in a program and and we started doing this practice where once a week, we get together and we answer three questions. What do I desire? What am I afraid of? And what do I love about myself? And the more we can get in touch with these things, the more expansive we become, and especially just the acknowledgement of the fear. So my advice to our listeners would be stop running from fear, identify it, own it, embrace it, and then let's do some reframes. Let's play with these fears. Let's learn to make friends and hold hands with the fear so we can move through it and go forward as opposed to letting it subconsciously run the show. Love that. Love that. Absolutely huge, huge (laughs) wisdom for everybody. Jess, how can people find you? Where in the world do you hang out? And I know you've got an incredible free gift for everybody. So tell us all the things. (laughs) <laughs> Yay! No, I'd love to tell you the things. Um, let's see. Well, I, I do. Um, I have my website and that is primarily focused on my sales success business. So if you're an entrepreneur who needs support with sales skills and selling authentically and consensually and not falling into the, the trap of thinking that if you're selling, that makes you a sleazy used car salesman on the on the car lot selling a lemon or what have you. Um, <laughs> my website is uh, agelessjust.com. The other thing that routes to it is salessuccess.biz. So both of those will take you to my website. Um, I'm also on Instagram as agelessjess. <laughs> I, I recently, my, I opened up a page for my dog. I have a beautiful American Eskimo, um, a Japanese Spitz. I don't know if you're familiar with with those pups. They're very beautiful, but I, I, I started a page for her just to have some fun. Yeah. And um, I recently I was having so much fun putting her on a on an Instagram page. She's Cinco the boat dog that I promoted her as a joke to my director of marketing. So now she's marketing on marketing <laughs> my page. <laughs> wow. I love so, it. Yeah. So, yes, I'm, I'm also uh, my business page is, is Ageless Jess Sales Success. And if you go there and you see a bunch of photos of a white dog, that's because she is now the director of marketing, at least for the duration. For, for... I love it. I'm going to go and check her out. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll enjoy it. I promise. She does not disappoint. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> so got your website, your, your LinkedIn profile. Um, and, and the it, gift. Um, you asked me about the gift. I'm sorry. Yes. I didn't mean to forget that piece. Um, for anyone listening, 
Um, I, I'm offering a 20 minute call where we can actually, you can bring your hairiest and scariest fear to the table and we'll do a little fear dissolving around that. Similar to what I did with Luisa, we'll do some tools and really dive into that fear so you can really emerge refreshed and kind of laughing at the fear because it's going to seem laughable by the time we dilute it to the, to the extent that I'm able to do with you on that 20 minute call. So sign up. It's my From Fearful to Fabulous call. I've given Louisa the, the link. I actually need to go in and update. So I'll have some time ahead of now um, for those calls. But please sign up. I'd love to meet you. Um, we can do it on Zoom or do an audio call, whatever you're more comfortable with. And I'd love to meet anyone that was moved by, by this podcast and wanting to really settle in and, and uh, move through one of, one of their very specific fears that's been holding you back. Oh, Jess, that's hugely generous. Thank you so, so much for, uh, for offering that. I uh, oh, hope everyone pleasure. takes up on it. <laughs> yeah, I hope some, somebody does. Because I mean, again, like, I'm, I'm here to, to help you change the world. And by, by doing that, you know, we have to change our thoughts. So absolutely get a grip on that and and you'll be amazed by the expansiveness and the things that open up as possibilities before you yeah we'll pop the link be beneath the the show so everyone can come and find you and uh take you up on that that's hugely hugely generous thank you so much i've loved chatting with you thank you for your time and your and your wisdom and your contribution to everybody today you are so welcome. And I will, I would love to to join you as a guest again. I'll come back anytime. And I, I referred a friend to you as well that I think you're really gonna love. So definitely look her up. Um, I did, I did put that on on the oh, on the absolutely. form. But thank you so much for having me, Louisa. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, Jess. And thank you everybody who has listened to our conversation today. We hope it has served you. Please do come and say hello to us on Facebook and Instagram. Let us know that you've listened. Tag me and Jess in, in your in your post, share your takeaway. We can continue having a conversation with you. We would absolutely, absolutely love that. Alrighty, until next time, sending you all lots and lots of love. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.